Okay, so first of all, I'll spend a little bit time talking about what does it mean by linearization, right? So, so I think uh, uh, there are several questions, threads on Piazza that are that are discussing linearization and what does it mean by ignoring the the squared terms. So linearization. First of all, I'll talk about the mathematical aspects of linearization. So, in general, if you have a function f of x. Let me give an example for if you want to solve a differential equation, right, and you discretize it, so you get a algebraic system, f of x equal to zero. x can be your unknown, so you can have a billion unknowns. So x is going to be a vector of very long, potentially. f is also a collection of equations. It can be also a billion equations, potentially. Right, and uh, you want to solve such a nonlinear equation. So, what do you do? One of the most powerful methods for solving such equations is through linearization. So, what we do is that we basically linearize f of x around what's called an initial guess. So, let's say let's guess the solution to be approximately equal to x0. And uh, for different scenarios, we op may obtain this initial guess in different ways. And the solution procedure is going to be like that. We assume let x prime to be the difference between the true solution and the initial guess. So x prime is something we don't know. right? It's just uh, like the p prime and uh, uh, u prime, rho prime in the project except for in the project we have an initial guess we have a p0 of the the solution without the bump right so because we if we don't have a bump we know what the solution is it's uniform it's p0 everywhere rho zero everywhere so that's our initial guess right okay so now we have a bump we know the bump is small so that initial guess should be a pretty good initial guess right if the bump is really small Okay, so now let's define our x prime to be the difference between the true x and our, our guess. So the next step is to linearize the equation. What does that mean? Taylor series. So Taylor series says that what's the difference between f of x and f of x zero? It can be expanded using Taylor series. So, so f of x can be represented as f of x0 plus the first derivative term. In this case is partial f, partial x. I'm writing partial here because, as I said, f can be a huge vector, x can be a huge vector. Now, what does partial f, partial x mean? What is the derivative of a huge vector with respect to another huge vector? It's going to be a huge matrix, right? And uh, here is a, even a huge matrix is the simpler form because in a, in the differential equation, f is a differential equation. x is a, a, a function of potentially space and time. So the derivative here can be actually infinite dimensional. It can be a linear operator as opposed to a matrix. But let's uh, stick to a matrix case. And uh, for the project, if you <laughs> keep looking at it, you'll figure out it's a linear operator in that case. So this times x minus x0, which is actually what? x prime, right? So here we have a linear operator or a matrix operated on the perturbation x prime. And then the next term is half of the second derivative of f with respect to x, which is even more than the matrix. It's what we call a bilinear operator times x prime, it's not really x prime square, x prime, x prime. So, so these are the terms we neglect, right? These are the terms where that involves x, one component of x prime times the other component of x prime. These are the things we can ignore if we know x prime is small. Yes, question? So the notation is x prime uh, The notation is saying that the, the this second order derivative is a bilinear operator, so it's more almost like a. Um, 
So it's, it's linear with respect to the first argument and also linear with respect to the second argument. Right, so if you fix the first argument, it's a linear function of the second argument. If you fix the second argument, it's a linear function of the first argument. So that's that's the notation of a, a of a bilinear operator. We'll get more into bilinear operators when we are going to the finite element part of this lecture. So here we just uh, need to know that because the first and second argument both are small, this can be this is much much smaller than the first term in this Taylor series, and also the rest of the terms are even smaller. So these are basically ignored. All right. OK. So why is that useful? Why is that useful for us to figure out what x prime should be? Well, it's useful because now the right hand side is a linear operator operated on x prime. Or in the discrete case, it's a matrix times an unknown vector. So. If the left hand side can be calculated, right, then we can solve for x prime. Now is the left hand side calculatable? Is that easy to calculate the left hand side? If f is given, yeah, f is something we know, right? We can evaluate. Then we also know our initial guess. So f of x0 is known. It's simply how much our initial guess does not satisfy the equation. Okay, so this is computable. This is computable. How about f of x? Yes? I can also compute that, but I don't know x. x is the unknown solution. Can iterate, but like this case, f of x is what? Look at this. Zero. Right. So this is zero. This is by definition of x. Right? Because x is the truth. I mean, we don't know x, but we know f of x. f of x is zero. It's just uh, uh, the defined by the equation. So this is zero. OK, so the whole left hand side is computable. The first term is zero. The second term, we just need to substitute our initial guess into the equation. I mean, go back to the project, that's actually what we are doing. So so this differential, I mean, this is not a matrix, it's a differential operator, it's a linear differential operator. Okay, f of x is 0, and uh, f of x 0 is how much the right hand side of the differential equation, uh, or, or the any boundary condition actually, is how much the uniform flow is not satisfying the true boundary condition. Okay, actually the uniform flow actually satisfies the whole differential equation, so there is no internal source terms, but the uniform flow is not satisfying the boundary condition, so you will have some non-zero boundary condition in the linearized equations. Okay, so that's what we do, and, uh, uh, and by the way, this is the first step in applying the Newton's method in solving nonlinear equations, right? To keep using the Newton's method, what you do is you set and uh, for, for Newton's method, and we'll get to that when we start solving nonlinear equations. For Newton's method, then you set x1 equal to x0 plus x prime, right? Because that's going to be a better guess, right? Then you solve this again, you're, you're going to be okay, fx minus f of now x1 is going to be again the. Jacobing or the derivative times x prime one, okay, and uh, plus ignorable things, and then you do x two equal to x one plus x one prime, etc. So, if your initial guess is good enough, you're going to converge. You're going to be closer and closer to the true solution for every Newton's iteration. Whenever we need to solve nonlinear differential equations, we discretize it. We get the f instead of as a differential equation. We get the f as an algebraic equation, and we use Newton's method to solve it. Right. So that's another application of linearization that is very useful. There are yet other applications of linearization. For example, when we want to know how much error we are incurring by discretizing a nonlinear equation, we use linearization. There is yet another application of linearization when we want to know if our numerical scheme for solving a nonlinear equation is stable or unstable. 
we use linearization. Right, so linearization is very useful in, in this course. And uh, I mean, I think in general, engineering is, is very useful in kind of uh, even getting an intuition of how things goes.